Hey, this is Rob with BlackFilm.com, and I am so excited to sit down today and have a conversation with Jazzy Collins and Kami Madison from Solstice Casting. How are you? Good. I'm good. Good. How are you doing? I am good. I'm good. I'm having a great day. Can't complain. <laughs> Glad to hear it. So I was really excited to have this conversation with you today because most people just see the magic on TV, but they don't get to see the, the people behind the magic. So I thought it was so important to, to put you all in the forefront and uh, have people give people the opportunity to, to, to hear from you and have that conversation about the beautiful magic, the magic that you create and that we all love to binge watch. So um, I want to start by having both of you just tell me a little bit about how you got started in the casting industry and like what drew you to it. Perfect. Jazzy, you want to go? Give it a sure. go, girl. All right. Sure. Um, so I always had an interest in television and movies when I was younger. So I went to school for it. Um, I went to Quinnipiac University, which was not a film school by any means. It's a more of a health science school, but we got a scholarship. We got there for cheaper. So, you know, you got to save the coin somehow. Um, I ended up graduating um, and made my way out to Los Angeles and realized, like, I don't have a job. I know I want to do something in TV. What do I do? Um, I applied for everything. I did PA work. Um, I worked on commercials and stuff like that. And then I realized, um, you know, I hate being on set. Like I really need to find a way to be in the office. Um, so I was in the office. I did an office production job. Um, I went in for another interview um, and they actually asked me if I wanted any interest in doing casting. Um, and I was like, sure, I need a job. So let's go for it. So my <laughs> first job was on Let's Ask America, um, which is funny because it was like way ahead of its time because it was a game show through Skype. Um, oh, and now look at what we're doing these days. Um, interviews and game shows, everything through the internet. Um, and ever since then, I have been just going for it. I absolutely love working in reality TV. I love working in casting. Um, and that's kind of how I fell into this. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so I mean, very different life than Jazzy. <laughs> I did not want to work in TV. I wanted to be a um, child advocacy lawyer. Um, I studied law and sociology at the University of Santa Cruz. Prior to that, I won a culinary school scholarship. So I've lived a thousand lives. Yeah. Um, and basically while studying for my LSAT, my family encouraged me to try out working in the real world before I dive back into school. I worked on Let's Make a Deal with a phenomenal Wayne Brady. Um, and in three weeks, I was promoted to set casting producer. Um, you know, I love people. Um, and it still gave me that, that, that excitement, that feel that I was looking for through law, right? To fight for people, to mm -hmm. make sure that, you know, there's representation and all that fun stuff. So um, I'm still able to kind of fulfill that, that drive, that need through casting. And it's been almost... 10 years. Um, so yeah, I've had a good ride through Survivor, um, L Love Island. Uh, let's make it, yeah, I can go on and on. I've been doing this for a long time. That's all you need to know. I'm gonna yeah, I know you You both have like an incredible resume of, of shows that you've cast from uh, Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls to uh, Survivor and the list goes on and on and on. The Circle, which I am obsessed with, is one of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> so I know like you guys have an amazing resume, which congratulations Jazzy on like making Emmy history as the first black casting director to be nominated in the reality category. I think that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I wanted to find out um, what have been some of your career highlights because you have worked on some of the most amazing shows. Mm -hmm. um, Lizzo was definitely one of the biggest highlights, of, sh of course. Um, reason being, not only obviously because of the Emmy nom, but um, because I was a dancer when I was younger. Um, so I felt like I was, you know, got to take stuff from my past and bring it to my future. Um, and I haven't been dancing in maybe like, oh gosh, 10 years. So it was really nice to like, feel like I went back in time and, you know, kind of reignite that passion and that love. Um, my other big uh, highlight was The Circle. Um, the Circle, I actually cast and then I went overseas and I was uh, one of the producers on set as well. So very rarely in casting do you have the ability to cast the show and travel all the way through production with it. Um, and that was one of the shows I did. So it was really nice to like, see these people, meet them for the first time, but then also bring them throughout their entire journey. And I got to hang out in Manchester for a month. So <laughs> all, expenses, that. <laughs> right? all expenses paid. Like I was living my best life. It was great. <laughs> I love it. How about you, Kami? 
Um, I think, you know, coming from the culinary world, MasterChef is definitely a win for me. Um, I was able to co-lead the team um, from Atlanta to New York to Chicago, all the black hotspots. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, through that journey, I was able to meet some amazing home chefs, home cooks, uh, people that really love what they do. Um, Hell's Kitchen was also a wonderful highlight of mine. Um, I was able to work alongside Carla Francis, who recently passed away. She was one of the well-known Black uh, production managers for the past 15 years. Um, so just even having that experience with her was just once in a lifetime. Um, I mean, you know, Survivor was definitely a special one as well because, um, you know, I was one of the first and uh, cast Black casting producers on the show. Um, so to be there, to be present, to show up and to represent, you know, all of us meant a lot to me. And I don't I don't take that lightly in any in any aspect. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I mean, I, I don't think you can go wrong with a dance production or anything that has to do with food. Like it's a win win, <laughs> right? <laughs> definitely. Yeah. definitely. <laughs> so with the wealth of experience that you both have, what what drove you to team up and create Solstice together? Kane, you want to take this one? <laughs> okay. Well, this is always a question. <laughs> we kind of go back and forth. Um, you know, Jazzy and I, you know, there's just not a lot of black females in the casting world. Um, there are other individuals who, you know, we can definitely say are paving the way. Um, but because we're both in LA, we kind of were getting the calls call for the same jobs. And, you know, we don't see it as competition. We see it as opportunities for the both of us. So if one wants it, we would just be like, it's all yours, go for it or vice versa. But we were like, well, why don't we just combine teams and collect all the coins and do it in house <laughs> all by ourselves, make the decisions and do what's what's right. Um, so in March of this year, um, I kind of just randomly hit her up when I was kind of deciding whether or not I was going to take this show. Um, and I was like, you know what, let's just say screw it and start from the top. So we did. And I mean, she was a trooper, let me tell you. Um, Jazzy was knee deep in this show um, that she was working on and, you know, working on traveling again. Um, you know, and I was kind of trying to man the fort at home and trying to find our footing. And it kind of just went from there. So we've been blessed enough to be working uh, since May of this year up until, honestly, Friday. So it's been real good. It's been real good. Yeah. And I think something that's really important for both of us was um, representation on TV. And, you know, we always want to see everyone that like basically we want to see ourselves on TV. We haven't had a chance, I guess, growing up really seeing black women, especially black women with natural hair. I never got to see growing up. Um, so I was all about like, how do we make sure we see that representation in television? And it all starts behind the scenes. Um, and uh, both me and Kami are huge, you know, proponents for that. We want to constantly hire people that are in underrepresented communities. You know, we have a, a casting editor um, on our team that's from China. Like most people don't usually have all these experiences and the opportunities to work in LA um, and work on these big shows uh, because they're usually glossed over because everyone hires their friends. Um, so we're all about trying to bring in different communities mm -hmm. and actually, you know, cast these amazing shows as well. Mm -hmm. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, and I was just actually going to dive right into that. I, I was going to say, I know you both have been like very vocal uh, 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 champions for inclusion and representation, especially for the BIPOC community. So with that with what you're doing, how important is it to the actual end product to have people of color uh, working on the, the inside, or like making the decisions and, and having a voice in the creative process in order to actually show the world the beauty of who we are? Oh man, uh, I think it's extremely vital. I mean, hands down, I, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of typecasting, right? putting black people in roles that we think they should be in instead of why don't we show the diaspora which within the black community within the asian community within all these other communities instead of just pushing people into these these roles that just kind of fit or are easy to push them into so we want to show off you know the the uh, uh, the black weirdos you know things like that and i say that in a good way because i am one um and i know what it's like to be ostracized in our community i know it's what know how it feels to be left out so Yes, it is important for the end product to be POC focused, but it also has to be the right role for the right people, not just what feels right because of what they've always done. Absolutely, absolutely. I've been having that conversation with uh, my friends and family recently, especially with uh, the woman king coming out and that being such 
a powerful, beautiful symbol of who we are and like pride in, in our in our culture. Um, and to have so many black women uh, as a part of that production from, you know, from uh, directing to, you know, the cast, it was just such a beautiful product. And I think more, more work like that is important and like seeing us in a beautiful light. So thank you for continuing to be advocates for us. Um, uh, my next question for you is in the in the reality space, when you're casting, do you often see the wow factor of the people who walk into the room beforehand? Or is there something that you um, specifically look for? Or do people walk in and you immediately go, they're going to be a hit? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's different for every show. Um, but there's some people that like they just come into a room and they just shine like you just you see it immediately once they open their mouth but some people it's like once they tell this incredible story that's when you really get into it because it's very easy for a lot of people when they're interviewing for reality shows they think they want us, us to see a specific type that they've already seen on tv which is the total opposite of what we want we want to see you and we want to see what makes you special and we want to hear about your story because that's what's going to play out on television um so sometimes Sometimes people come in and they're like, you know, Woo! like screaming, doing all this stuff. And then they tell us this amazing story about how they overcame, you know, stage four breast cancer. And I was like, leave with that. That's something that is, you know, a lot of people haven't experienced. And we want to hear that story. Yeah, perfectly I said. It. I love it. So I know you've uh, dominated in the reality space and in the commercial space. Are there plans for you to, to move into the scripted world anytime soon? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sky's the limit. That's all I gotta say. Jazzy, you wanna dive in? We say no to nothing if it makes sense. <laughs> I mean, if someone comes to us with a project that we're really excited about, then absolutely. Um, I am I will never say no to a new opportunity, but we're just very comfortable, I guess, right now with reality and commercials. Um, I think it's something I think commercials just have, I mean, not, not just commercials, reality TV just has a lot of work to do. And I want to continue fixing and doing as much as we can in this space before we move on to bigger and better things. <laughs> <laughs> and I know next time around, it's going to be an Emmy win. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited yes. for that. I'm putting yes. that out in the universe. Thank <laughs> yes, you. Love that. That's what we need. That's what love we need. That. Yes. That's that good energy. <laughs> putting it out. That good energy. You put it out. <laughs> so my, my last question for you is if you have, if you have advice for, um, aspiring casting or production uh, professionals, what would that be? What would you, what, what advice would you share with them? Does you want to go first? Let me, let me take a minute to think. <laughs> no, right? Let's see. Um, my, my, I have, I always have like a couple of things that I say for advice, but the one I'm going to go for is um, never say no to an interview. Um, a lot of people, say, mm, I don't know about this show. Ooh, I don't know about this company. I heard X, Y, and Z about this. I never say no to an opportunity because you never know where it might lead you. Um, even if like I went in for an interview for an office production position and I ended up in a casting position and now look, so you never know where you'll end up. So just take the interview, even if you don't want to do it. That was a good one. That was perfect. Um, uh, you know, we all know the power of networking, social networking, otherwise, but the physical P2P interaction is super important because this is who you are. This is, you know, what this job will be for you in the long run. So go to those events and you're like, this is dumb. There's probably not going to be any black people there. There's probably going to be five people there. It's like, no, you should go. I know you don't want to go out on a Tuesday. I know you're tired, but you should probably go because I'm a huge person that's all about right time, right place, you know, whatever that may be for you. And just don't turn down any opportunities to, to meet other people. Uh, Jazzy and I can attest to that. We've met people at, at random events. We're like, I don't really want to do this. And the next thing we know, we got a job because we talked to the right person who also didn't want to be there. And that's why we connected. Um, so, yeah, that's always my advice is, you know, you have to fight. I don't care how tired you are. I don't care how burnt out you are. If you really want this, you have to keep pushing. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like you all dropped some some gems today. You know, I learned coins over competition. I'm taking that because, you know, make those coins and don't compete. Just work together collectively. Mm -hmm. And I love the advocacy, the advocacy of what you do. I love that you continue to put people of color in the room and 
continue to push push our stories forward in a positive way. So thank you very much, Jazzy and Kami. Thank uh, you. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, have a good one.